You're listening to Mad Men Sports, sponsored by Black Button Distilling. At 149 Swan Street, it's a perfect place to go for happy hour, uh, to grab a drink with some friends after the baseball game or a Sabres game. I know we grab drinks together sometimes Oh, there. it's so nice. It's definitely a nice, relaxing atmosphere after a hectic day at work. It's always a nice place to go, grab a quick cocktail, and say, you know what? Cheers to a day well done. Heck yeah. So, I'm your host, Jake. Other host, Zach. I'm Zach. Uh, we don't have Dave today, and that's fine. It's fine. He had a prior commitment, and that's all right. You know, we, we allow people to adjust to our schedule. And uh, he took fine. a PTO day, in his words, he would say that. Yeah, Mad Men Sports never really stops. Yeah, he's still getting paid. Yeah, Mad Men Sports doesn't stop. So, you want to know who does stop? The Eagles, apparently, because they're three and four. Oh, my God. They won a Super Bowl in recent memory, so you definitely can't sleep on this team. But three and four is definitely not where you'd look and think, man, that's where the Eagles are right now. And their wins, they have one good win. Against the Packers. Not a play on wood on, you know, good one. <laughs> but they, they beat the Green Bay Packers, which is a great team this year. It's I believe it's their only yeah. loss. Yeah. So Eagles have played a good team and beat the good, a good team. Their other two wins, though, are against the, the Jets. Jets and the Redskins. Not great. That's that's not good, guys. No. Four losses plus two very questionable wins. Now, to be fair, Bills have some questionable wins on their resume, but you can only play the teams that you play against them. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't find teams to play against. You don't make the schedule, against. so. Yeah. yeah, you know, that 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 above their pay grade there. So, it's a different experience than the Eagles usually are. There's a lot of flaws. Jake and I. Spent a lot of time watching a lot of Eagles games. Probably more than we have but any other opponent at this point. I'm not impressed. No. And what's going on with the Eagles locker room? I mean, you have Fletcher Cox fending off a burglar with I, a I, shotgun. I think it's an outside of the it's locker fine. room incident. Fine, there. let's bring it in. <laughs> There's rumors of Elshon Jeffrey talking shit about Carson Wentz. Nelson Aguilar, they're questioning his effort. I mean, what's going on? I, I saw Brian Westbrook kind of just tear into the Eagles. I mean, they're not crumbling, but it, the locker room's definitely fractured. Uh, Yeah, it's a whole different team compared to what won the Super Bowl. Obviously, Nick Foles won the Super Bowl. Yeah. He's in Jacksonville. He's living it up in club med a little bit. Um, <laughs> they are. Yeah, you get your money. You shut that shit down. That's for damn sure. Yeah, let I'm the a, young boys do it. Yeah, that, yeah. Let, let let that Gardner guy go to town. But the Eagles, they have a good run game. Yeah, with Miles Sanders and Jordan, Jordan Howard. Howard. Uh, their offensive line's very suspect. Injuries have piled up. Yeah, Jason Peters. Jason was a, Peters did not, did not participate in Wednesday's practice. I'm gonna assume he doesn't make it to Sunday. I don't like to assume injuries because that's like something. If you watch our shows every week. You know that we really don't talk about injuries that much no. because we film on Wednesday. comes out Thursday. There's still two more days of practice. However, Jordan, or excuse me, uh, Jason Peters is definitely a question mark. He's one of those guys that's definitely on the tail end of their career. He's definitely in the injury report a lot more often than he's probably ever been. Uh, he was a former Bill. Yeah, very very long time ago. There. Yeah. He did have a couple injuries here, and it looks like he, you know, he became an all-pro with the Eagles. Definitely fell off a little bit the last couple of years. The injuries have piled up. He's definitely ailing. Yeah, and they're cutting players, too. They cut two players uh, over this week as well. So I mean, Yeah, they lost Zach Brown because they cut him after he talked so much smack about Kirk Cousins, and then Kirk Cousins came out and smacked him. So, you know, it was a hell of an experience with the Zach Brown, also a former Bill. <laughs> and the list doesn't end there. Jim Schwartz is the defensive coordinator yeah, there. Jim Schwartz is coming back to Buffalo. Yeah, um, I believe it's his first time back in Buffalo since – not Lions. getting the head coaching job. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. I think, yeah, yeah. So, uh, the, there's definitely maybe some bad blood there. Maybe he wants to show how good this defense is. Which, <laughs> however, lots of injuries. The defense is not good. No. Um. Shout out to Wes. He is Mad Men Sports Eagles expert. He's very high on the Eagles. I am also very high on the Eagles. And I'm not. I, I can't believe that people are in Philadelphia are down on that team. They're three and four, but they're a good three and four. They beat the Redskins. They beat the Jets. They still have the Dolphins on their schedule. They're definitely a team that's ripe for at least four more. Three more wins. No, no, no. Four, four wins total. They're <laughs> definitely, they're definitely ripe for four more wins. Excuse me, four wins total this season. So oh, that's definitely no. a good team. That's definitely a good team. Um, you look at the roster, and I think 
as as our Eagles correspondent Wes would say, this team healthy can beat any team in the NFL. And you want to know what? When are they healthy? I think any team healthy could beat any team in the NFL. So that's fair. It's very fair. So, you know what? We probably know a little bit more about the Eagles than the average Bills podcast because we have a Eagles correspondent in our buddy Wes. Who just always, always talks about the Eagles. Yeah, and you know what? It feeds and helps this podcast grow. Uh, he was very excited to get Jalen Mills back. Eagles are excited to get Jalen Mills back. And then I watched the game on Sunday, and then I think, why are they excited to have Jalen Mills back? He's been yeah. missing tackles. Um, he definitely is still hurt. Um, and then I look into it a little bit. Eagles fans' perspective on Jalen Mills. They hate that guy. Like, okay, sure, he's been not bad. And, you know, the record with him and Darby in the starting lineup is actually not that bad either. But out of the three years that they've been together, they've only been in the starting lineup less than a full season. So he, the injuries pile up. We had Ronald Darby. He's the opposite corner. He's got a bum hamstring, came off of a torn ACL two year, last year. His injuries pile up. Wes, our Eagles correspondent, will be the first person to tell you to shoot that training staff to the moon, get rid of him, gone. But also, you got to overcome those. Next man up mentality is a thing all the way across the NFL. If you can't overcome injuries like they did when Carson Wentz went down, they overcame it with Nick Foles. Howie Roseman is known for getting talented players into that locker room. Brought in Jordan Howard, brought in Alshon Jeffrey. He's a big fan of X-Bills, or Bears, excuse me. Yeah. And a big fan of X-Bills. There was not a stutter there. But his depth isn't something he would really pride his head on, I would say. You you you, you watched a couple games on the Eagles easily. Yeah. That that defense, that pass defense is it's the worst in the NFL. Horrible. And people were are saying, I mean, they have a decent run defense, but I didn't see it yet again. They were going against Ezekiel Elliott, so there's something in that, but Carry on Johnson too. I mean, he's not an All Star running back, but he not, gashed him. Not yet, and he's a guy that really hasn't really popped. I mean, he's always had high expectations and hasn't popped as a running back in his career yet. Uh, the Bills are going into this game a one and a half point favorite, which, to be fair, home team gets three points. So the Eagles have chipped into that three points that you get automatically as a home team. However, I think a lot of people across the board, Vegas, ESPN, anywhere you look are down on the Bills because of how competitive that Miami game is. But I watched it, you watched it, you watched it. You've seen Miami in that game. You saw how excited they were, how amped they were. And then you saw the second half where they kind of toned it down and couldn't do anything against the Bills team because, as Lorenzo Alexander said on Monday, someone asked him how the slow start happened. He goes, we were, we were on a bye week, you know. Your eyes aren't the same as coming off a fresh week. You take a week off, you relax, your eyes aren't as tested, you slow it down a little bit because you are not. You don't have to be up all the time. You take a week off, your eyes kind of get glazed over. You see the first half, their eyes were definitely glazed over. Second half, they come out, it's like the switch flipped on that uh, long opening drive by the Dolphins. Trey White turned the page, Jordan Phillips turned the page, everything went on from there, it was all Bills. So I yeah. don't think the Bills are going in with the same mentality or the same energy that they had against the Dolphins. The Eagles are known for slow starts. The Bills aren't really, you know, they're not known for anything, actually. This team yeah. doesn't have an identity yet, which is really weird because you're a 5-1 team without an identity. You have a good defense. Offense doesn't have an identity whatsoever. This is their chance. You got two more home games in a row. Come out, have an identity. What do you think, Jake? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be something for the Bills to capitalize on, specifically on defense. I mean, the Eagles offense, they're just turning the ball over like crazy. A lot of fumbles. Jordan Howard, team. Miles Sanders, and even the wide receivers, they're dropping balls. Not so much interceptions. I'm not seeing a lot of interceptions, just a lot of fumbles. And the Bills, not so much ball hawking, but they go after that ball. So I'm... Looking for a lot of turnovers on Sunday. Trey White, AFC player, of the player week. defensive player of the week. Two turnovers. I mean, I we called it out here. Dave sat where I'm sitting right now and said, Diamond in the rough. We called it out. He had his best game as a Bill. That's his first time winning AFC defensive player of the week. What more could you want from the guy? He's a shutdown corner. He's starting to get up there. A little bit more recognition. And he's just, as he should. As he should. Yeah. Now, Zach, let me ask you something. I'm listening. Is the RPO dead? Is it still a viable option in the NFL? Uh, anything you can do to freeze the defense 
is a good option in the NFL. So if you can even get the linebackers or the corners or the safeties, whatever, to freeze for a split second, you're giving your guy at least an option to beat his man for a split more second. But so, wouldn't you say the RPO offense is kind of commonplace in the NFL now? I mean, multiple totally. teams run it now. Well, so. they run it because you give your not, you give yourself an option to freeze the defense for a second. Yeah, exactly. Because you see Carson Wentz, he, he likes to run. So, we so does Josh Allen. I mean, which you right? Could, if we could do the quarterback comparison, you'd see they're probably a lot more similar than oh, anyone. Yeah. Philadelphia fans, Bills fans, national media, they're probably a lot more similar than anyone would like to admit. Yeah, exactly. Because didn't they come from similar... They came from the same conference, right, in college? Or there's some weird connection with them, right? Oh, uh, they're both, like, mid-northeastern... Yeah, mid-northeastern. Mid- mid-northwestern people. I don't know. I mean, smaller schools. Or the same coach. Middle of nowhere. Something like that. I don't know. There's definitely some weird comparison between Josh Allen and Carson Wentz. But, yeah, I definitely... Tall s- dudes from states no one cared about. Exactly. That's probably no, But I, I definitely see your comparison. I mean, you got the long, athletic, kind of... Not scared to throw the ball uh, have been punished for running in some aspects. I know that's how Wentz got hurt the Super Bowl year. Ran it in, got his knee busted up on the goal line. Josh Allen, similar to, you know, we've seen it. We've talked about it. We don't need to harp on that too much. You know, tall guy, big arm, not a lot of talent on wide receiver around him. You know, spry court coaches. I think the coaches are definitely from the same coaching tree. I mean, there's a lot of similarities here. We're going to find out on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. Who is the better guy right now? Now, Carson Wentz was the MVP at one point of the season when he won the Super Bowl. That was two years ago. It, this is a what have you done for me lately, and his wide receivers haven't done anything for him lately, even the tight ends. Yeah. Zach Ertz, if you own him in fantasy, not having a good year. No, yeah, he's very mediocre this year for sure. I mean, him and Travis Kelsey have been known to be the replaceable one and two on top tight ends in the league, and you're just not seeing it for both either of them. But um, kind of flipping the script here. You had Miles Sanders, big player on special teams and in running back, actually back up to Saquon Barkley at Penn State, and Jordan Howard, ex-Chicago Bear. Back with, up to Terry Cohen. Yeah, with the Bills defense stopping Saquon Barkey, Barkley, Le'Veon Bell, Joe Mixon. Some random dude from Miami. Exactly. So how do you think the Bills defense is going to fare against this kind of two-headed monster? Well... The Eagles' best part of their offense is the run game, and that's because you can take the ball, put it in Carson Wentz's hand, and he can immediately put it in someone else's hands without the fear of a drop. That is something that he's got to be excited about because their offense line isn't terrible. Lane Johnson's a stud. You know what I mean? Definitely. You run behind him, you're going to get a couple yards every time. However, this Bills defense is legit. And everyone always says, you know, other teams have good defenses. How do they match up? And this is how I always look at it. These teams match up like this. I'm taking the Bills defense at like a two-point scale compared to the Eagles offense. And then I'm taking the Bills offense and going against the Bill Eagles defense. And I think they're almost even. So at this point, I give the Bills a two-point skill difference out of how that breaks down. Because I trust the Bills defense going against the Eagles offense more than I trust the Eagles offense going against the Bills defense. So yeah, I, I'm more excited about how this game goes because of the defense is so trusted. I think they shut down the run. It's not easy to say because they have a two headed monster spry chicken. They're, they're almost, Oh, and Darren Sproles. Don't forget about yeah, Darren. Seriously. Sproles. They're almost comparable to the bills with their running back situation. You have an old <laughs> Darren Sproles. Exactly. You got, you know, you, you have uh, Singletary, and you have Sanders, two young guys, get get them the ball more. B- both offenses are crying for their rookie running backs to get the ball more. Jordan Howard's had a good couple games. They haven't translated to wins, so what good does that do for you? But Frank Gore has had a good you know, stretch of the season here. I think these offenses are comparable in the fact that, maybe not in talent, but in so far, you know, I mean, Jesus, we're seven weeks into the season. Yeah, You know who you are at this point. Yeah, and Zach, you raised a good point. You're really not high on Zach Ertz this year, for good reason, of course. But They're what, doubling him, that's why. Exactly. What do you think about Nelson Aguilar and Elshon Jeffries? How do you think they're going to match up on the Bills' defensive backs? Um, I think, I mean, I'm not big into shadowing or following a wide receiver just because 
I feel like if you have good corners, it doesn't matter who covers and who. And there's not an all star on the Eagles' exactly. offense. You're that not shadowing would warrant anyone. that, right? However, if I am Trey White, I ask to be shadowing Elshon Jeffrey just because he's the only receiving threat in that team. You know, Deshaun Jackson came back, came back to Philly. Did uh, not participate play, this week either. Played a couple games. Was like, you know what? This was good enough for me. I'm going back to gang banging with uh, Redskins and all that stuff. Like whatever <laughs> the, the weirdest stuff that he was ever doing for that like three year stretch there. So Deshaun Jackson's gone. Whatever. Chuck him. I mean, Eagles fans. I'm sorry, man. That didn't work out. It was fun for a couple weeks. You got to see the Wentz to Jackson connection. But if I'm the Bills, I I beg for Aglehor. To be bench or to be lined up across Levi Wallace because that is such a good matchup. Because, like I said, this is how I look at it. I'm taking, even though Aguilar, I mean, Eagles dog Nelson so bad. You know, that guy that saved those people out of a burning building was like, I didn't drop him, like Aguilar, whatever. That was so funny. It was funny. It was, I get it. You know, but, you know, congrats to that guy. But that guy does have a drop problem. But as we saw in the Lions game, he's got skill. He's fast. He can, he can catch, I promise you. Like He might not want to sometimes, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. He might give up on a play or two. But I want Levi Wallace because I, on him because I think he's better. And I think I need Levi Wallace to kind of dominate and get challenged and tested still against a guy that, listen, Aguilar could hold his own. I think Levi Wallace and that is a good matchup. But also yeah, but I think. When you got Poyer and Hyde overlooking, I mean, there's not too many places to go. No. Exactly. Poyer and Hyde are going to have their hands full with, or in honor of Dave, Hyde, Hyde higher, and, higher and Poyd. I don't know what the fuck that means. Or Poyer, Hyde, I don't even know what he said. It's hard I to replicate even, that. No, it was so natural. And no one even batted an eye for a second. Yeah. But they're going to have their hands full with Dallas Goddard and, you know, Zach Ertz. Whether he's having a good season or not, Matt Milano will be back. He'll help in the passing game. I think this Bills defense matches up beautifully with this Eagles team that has a really bad left side of the line. And if you're an offense, you want the left side of the line to be your best side of the line because it's backside of quarterback. Jerry Hughes better have two sacks on Sunday. Oh, That's yeah. something that Dave would say right now. He'd say, I need him to have two sacks. And let's run the ball more. Yeah. You know what? Let's do all those things. Like it. Get Jerry Hughes to get a sack. Strip sack. I don't care. This team is vulnerable. This isn't the Eagles team that won the Super Bowl. They're far, no. they're far from it. They yeah. might have some players still. Malcolm Jenkins is good on the safety spot. But I think this Bills defense really needs to feast. They need one of those games where, and listen, they've dominated. Yards, time of possession, all that. This team needs a couple turnovers so they get their swagger going into the second half of the season. They're they're running down the other side of the end zone doing pictures and all that stuff in the corner. Give me that this week against a, a quarterback that's probably pretty good. Probably the second best quarterback they've faced so far this season. Yeah. But not the best offense they've it's faced this season. not saying much, though. Yeah, exactly. No, for sure. Look what they did to the best quarterback they faced this season. You know, I mean, 149 passes. Exactly. Yards. They can smack people in the mouth and still, you know, face good quarterbacks. So they can hold their own. Yeah. And let's let's flip the script here as well because there's a lot to talk about on the Bills side of the ball, on the offense. Zach, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm very sorry. You're the one that told me this stat. There's only two players in the NFL with 50 yards every single game. Number one being nice Michael Thomas. Number two, our very own John Brown. And we talked about it. You are very high on John Brown, this game specifically, and all year, of course. I've been, I've been a big John Brown disciple, he honestly. He is going to eat this week. Oh, my God. Uh, I've had him on my fantasy roster, sitting on the bench all year. There's been times where I should have played him. Not, you know, i got to be honest. You know, Hindsight 2020. Of there. course. But I'm playing him this week. I don't even care who I'm taking out of my lineup. He's going against the 32nd pass defense. He is a guy that is always open. I think Cole Beasley has a great game this week because, you know, I don't know if you saw this, but at the game he threw his helmet. Yeah. You know, John Brown missed that. Or um, Josh Allen missed that uh, deep pass to Andre Roberts. He was very upset with that. Not the best uh, emotion, but he's he's open. I think Josh Allen goes out of his way to look for him open this week, especially against a team that he used to eat against as a Dallas Cowboy. Percent. So I think the Bills wide receivers this week, I mean – you know, FanDuel, DraftKings, anything. I mean, Richard Perks, our fantasy guru at this point. I mean, oh, he, yeah. he pumps out the good stuff. You know, he's on top of this. He, these Bills wide receivers eat this week in fantasy, and I think John Brown gets another 100 yards. Maybe a, a couple touchdowns. Who sees? Yeah. I, and 
Jake, I know you like calling it out. Do you think Josh Allen gets a three hundo? I mean, he's got to get it this week, right? The worst. They the could get up worst early though. Who knows? Defense in the NFL. Josh Allen, buddy, congratulations on a three hundred yard Jeez, game. Jeez, he's already congratulating him. That's too too much. I don't That's think so. Much. Come on, why? The worst pass defense in the league. You're not calling a three hundred yard game. I'm not, I don't call any game. He could get hurt. Boom! What a waste of my why, breath. Why, why would you even say that to me? I'm just saying. Yeah, stop saying. Well, I guess so. But if it was ever a time. But let, let's talk about this too. Devin Singletary, first game back from injury. You didn't see too much out of him. Do you see Devin Singletary taking a larger role, a, a large, or like workload this week against the Eagles? Devin Singletary, yeah, yeah. I think their pass defense is really good. That's something that I can say good about the Eagles, that their pass defense is, or their rush defense is really good. So I think they could slow down Singletary and Frank Gore, but I think it only opens up play action and over-pursuit. We saw Dak Prescott get that nice touchdown against them last week Yeah, because they all over-pursued on the right side of the defense. Yeah, it was right on the goal line, right? Yeah. That was beautiful. I mean, this team over-pursues, they sell out, which is something Jim Schwartz taught the Bills to do, and they got burned. You know, that team didn't make the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's not so much a slate on Jim Schwartz as much as this team just sells out every play, which is good. But get him to over-pursuit, over pursuit, get him to sell out every play on the wrong play. Play flake, fakes. You know Josh Allen's not going down every time. Now, I will say, Barnett and Cox, if they get a hand on Allen, he's probably going to go down this week. Yeah, He needs to not play hero ball against those two guys. Those guys are legitimate pass rushers. They're going to come crashing down on the ends in the, the middle. you got to be awake for that game. Those two guys, the whole defensive line is pretty decent, honestly. Be awake, be ready. But get them to over-pursue. Hit Dawson Knox in the end zone. Get all this. Get everyone going today. Yeah. Can I hit you with another hot take? Sure. The Detroit Lions ran a kickoff for a touchdown. Oh, I know. The I know where this is going. Andre Roberts. Fine. I won't say he's going to get a touchdown. But big yards. Big big yards for Andre Roberts. Are you all right with that? I'm not saying touchdown. I'm big yards. I'm not totally okay with it for one reason in particular, and maybe it's a hockey reason. The Eagles would need to score in order to have kickoffs. Well, at least get one. Exactly. And that I'll give you. And they'll have punts. They'll have punts. A lot of Unless punts. Unless they put turnover every ball, which <laughs> I've seen happen. Yeah. The Detroit game was not a clean football game. No. But, yeah, man, if only. Yeah, this Bills game is going to be fascinating because this is the game out of this home stretch that you were going to write down, you know. Mark it on your calendar, this might be the loss. This was the 50-50 game. As the game got closer and closer and the Vikings killed the Eagles, the Cowboys murdered the Eagles last week. This is a team, three straight away games. You know, Eagles fans were trying to get two out of the three games. I don't I don't know if they could pull out a win in New Era Stadium. Now, I'm not saying I guarantee a Bills win because this team's 5-1 and one and every, all five wins have been within, you know, nail-biting Losses. I mean, they could yeah. have gone either way at some point, but you, I, could, you could do the Josh Allen stat in fourth I, quarter. I, I've if you told want. you this before. I mean, I think no matter what who the Bills' opponent is, they do just enough to get the job done. Now, is that the best way to play football? No, it's no good enough to play football. No one's gonna say that's your ideal outcome there. But I think as the season moves along, the offense it finds their groove, and I mean, you see it with the Miami game. Normally, their third quarter is the worst quarter of football they play. That's when they start picking it up. I Pop think we're speak. just going to kind of start playing better a little earlier, a little earlier in the game. So Team has to wake up. I hey, agree. we might have a f- bad first quarter, but hey, if we get it done in the second, I'm totally fine with that. I think we'll be all right. No, I think I think the Bills will be... A little bit more better off than we thought they would have been a month ago. Oh, yeah. Because, I I mean, I think we talked about this, too, before we were predicting the season, where our losses were going to come from. I don't think we were all set on the Bills winning this game. But the season plays out. We're 5-1. and They're 3-4. and Yeah, who would have thought that this was the way the schedule would lie at this point? With us, I mean... I would have been surprised in the beginning of the season if the Bills were favored at home in this game. Yeah. I'm no longer surprised. I'm more surprised that it's only one and a half point. I'm surprised that the total, I believe the total is at 42 and a half. Well, let me Which, just double check that for you. I would bet the I, under on that game. Really? So you know. Yeah, because I think 
both teams will struggle to score. The Bills' offense—it's forty-three and a half. I think that's what I said. Four, uh, yeah, I guess. I think both offenses could struggle. I mean, we've only seen the Bills eclipse thirty points once this week, this year, and the other side of the ball has only eclipsed twenty points once, and that was in garbage time. So, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see forty-three happening for either team. It's close games. The Bills love being in them. And they almost try to, you know, make them in it. Listen, this team's going to be good as the season goes on because they're going to know how to win close games. Yeah, I'm calling the over on this one. Like I said and reiterated uh, in my original point, they're only clicking. They're starting to click now. They're only getting better earlier. So I think we do put up some good points. And it does seem like yesterday we talked about this, but it was a long time ago. We In our pre-week one podcast, I mentioned that this would probably be the time of the year where you start to see Josh Allen string together full games. And you know what? F- frame that audio point because I was dead on. It's a fantastic week to start now. Well, I mean, Tennessee he was probably his best game as a Bill. And then he followed it up with a pretty decent second half against the Dolphins, if you ask me. Yeah. A complete game, no turnovers finally. I think he rolls it into it, parlays three straight great games, and I think we start to see him hit a stride from here on out. I always say, and I know I hate saying it, but every time someone gets hurt, it's almost not only a wake-up call, but it slows the game down for them because they're able to watch the game, analyze it from the sideline in real time rather than going back and seeing it. I think when he got hurt against the Patriots, it was A, a wake-up call, and B, he was able to peel back, relax, watch the game slow down a little bit. There's no more nerves. He's already gotten hurt. He doesn't have to worry about getting hurt. Nothing like that. He's already turned the ball over a ton. He doesn't have to worry about over turnovers, too many turnovers. He's already done that. Now is his time to slow the game down, play within it, play within the offense, open the game up, hit Cole Beasley this week, hit John Brown in stride this week, get Andre Roberts a big touchdown. These guys are begging for it. Dawson Knox needs to just secure up the hands. I want to see him have a nice hand. I want him to be the best tight end in a game where he's easily the third best tight end talent wise. Oh, I yeah. want him to be the best guy. And maybe it's Tyler Croft. Who knows? We we who knows? Yeah, that could be interesting. I mean us as Bills fans, we know nothing about Tyler Croft other than his time in the bang with the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Let's see why we're paying him this money. Show me the money. Let's see it, because I say we cut him today. Why? He hasn't given us anything. Other than contract implications, Listen, what use for what use does he have for us? You know, we're what, twenty six minutes into this podcast and I we haven't even talked about all these, you know, the rumblings of trades and all this and that. The one trade if I was the Bills I'd explore. Just explore. I know Seattle needs a tight end. I would look to see if they had any interest in Tyler Croft. And you're paying market value, so you might get a sixth back for him, but that's cap relief. That's allowing you guys to play through him. Because, I mean, we got a Poyer we got to yeah. sign back next year. I mean, we... it's going to add up quick. Now, me and Dave talked about this last night, honestly. You know, this is when teams build around their quarterback because they're on that cheap contract. So you're going to pay those guys. You don't have to worry about it. But just getting Tyler Croft off the books, getting him out of the way of Tommy Sweeney, Dawson Knox, even Jason Kroon, which we're not a fan of here at Mad Men Sports. But no. We're going to give him a shot when he comes back because he's worth having a shot for because I know what he's done before. I know his role in this offense. It's better than what Tyler Croft did the other day. Now it's only yeah. one game, too, so I can't even knock him. Don't forget Lee Smith, by the way. I did. And so, so did you. Caught, caught a pass last week. I know. Um, let's do it. Jake, what do you think the score is going to be? Ooh. You said over, so you got to be over 50, 43 points. Good yes. luck thinking. And, obviously, we're going to renew this little contest here. We have oh, this I wasn't gonna beautiful this sign. I think someone's going to get it this week. That's why I wasn't going to do it. Oh. Well, I mean, too late now, right? I guess so. So, like I said, I have the over. So, I think it's going to be 34-27. Oh, shit. That's a lot of points both ways. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to be so nervous watching your game. However, I think the Bills... I can't even say if I guarantee the Bills to win this game. But it's a Bills podcast. I'll predict them to win this game. Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah, just for the sake of it. 17-9, to 9, Bills win. Wow. Yeah. Close game, low scoring. 
I think the Bills, I don't know, because I could see touchdowns too. So I don't know. 17 16, Bills win. I, I don't know. I think the Eagles. I'm are... even more terrified watching your game than my game. No, for sure. But at least there's not a ton of points, and I can trust the defense to pull out a good one. I don't know, because the Eagles' offense is legit. They could pop off. Listen, Elshon Jeffrey is the biggest wide receiver the Bills have seen yet. The tight ends are legitimate. The running backs are legitimate. This isn't a legit offense. This this defense is going to be tested. I hope they're ready to prove everyone wrong after last week. Jolt everyone in the national media back on the Bills bandwagon after a pretty am you know average game against the Dolphins. Let's let's see it, Bills. Prove the national media wrong. And Again. fans, obviously, try to win this ball, please. It's signed. I'm not going to say by who still. It'll just wind up at your doorstep, and then you can say in the comments, "Wow, I got a ball signed by." Beep. Yeah, exactly. So, Jake, send us out. We'll miss you, Dave. Sorry, Dave. Hey, guys. We're on all our social medias all the time. Twitter at MadMen underscore sports. Instagram at MadMen Sports. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Hit that like button. We're on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud. We're on everything. Check us out. Any search bar you got, Mad Men Sports. You'll find us. Go Bills.